There you go. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again to our 5 p.m. worship service. And for now, yes, po. For now, we are just live stream uh, online, and we'll let you know soon. And let's continue to pray for our nation. Let's also pray that the cases will be uh, lowered down. And we pray and we hope that you and your family are doing well. Uh, I know that this is the last Sunday of the month and it has been a full, <laughs> full uh, ride, adventure, full of faith for this month or first month of 2022 and I believe God will do amazing things. Would you agree with me? God will do amazing things. Would you agree with me guys? Yes, God will do amazing things this year 2022. Now we are down to our fourth week in our Abide series and we said that in this Abide series, God reveals himself to us through his word and as we know God, as we know Him, as we uh, encounter Him, we, our faith will, will grow and our understanding of Him will grow as well so that we can respond rightly or properly to Him. And we want the Word of God to have the, not just the final authority in our lives but also the first importance or prioritize it in our lives. Let me just, as we dive in today in the Word, I remember, uh, I don't know kung nakaka-relate kayo dito. Recently, uh, I bought a new phone. Okay? I bought a new phone in Marketplace. So, tinignan ko lang at uh, tinry ko. And I was so happy. Uh, it was so great. Great? <laughs> uh, so, it was a great deal with the specs and the price itself. So, sobrang saya ko nung na-receive ko yung phone. Sabi ko sa wife ko, grabe, ang ganda nito, 64 GB, uh, 128 GB, and, and this is just the price of it. Sobrang, sobrang saya ko. But that happiness just lasted for few minutes or few hours. But I regret it later on because what I bought... Uh, kaya pala sobrang mura, it's not original, okay? It's, it was a fake phone. Anyone can relate to that? Anyone can relate? Don't worry po, wala na sa akin yung phone na yun, okay? Nasa ibang tao na. And we probably been victims of fake things. Uh, maybe some of you uh, like this, naka-experience na kayo, di ba, ng fake iPhone, uh, nakita ko po to, fake iPhone na to, di ba? Kitang-kita mo naman, di ba? And also, I saw fake iPhone. Ang, hindi po siya I-P-H-O-N. iPhone po siya na F, iPhone. <laughs> iPhone po siya, di ba? O kaya iba sa atin, uh, na, 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 na victim na kayo ng fake na Adidas, di ba? Instead of Adidas, Adidos. Di ba? Parang ganito. Apat pa yung, yung linya niya, di ba? Or iba sa inyo, may gusto magbigay sa inyo. Sabi niyo, Lord, uh, grabe, maganda yung deal na nabili kong car. Di ba? Yung car na hindi lang isa yung, yung kabayo. Di ba? Ano yun? Isang kabayo? Ferrari, di ba? Tatlong kabayo na bigay sa iyo. Yun pala, saraw. Di ba? Saraw jeep, di ba? So, antipolo ata, biyahin nito. <laughs> Meron pang mga tugs-tugs yan. So, I think all of us also, or some of you, na nabigyan na kayo ng fake flowers. Na, nung nabigyan kayo, nung nangliligo sa'yo, tapos sabi mo, fake naman ito, plastic naman ito, gusto ko real flowers. Ang sabi niya sa'yo, uh, these flowers will last forever. <laughs> Naglagay pa ng linya, di ba? Pero ayaw mo yung gusto mo ng tunay, real, di ba? Sino sa atin, ayaw natin yung fake friends, tama? Gusto natin, ayaw natin yung user-friendly na friend. Uh, even for some of us, malapit na yung, di ba, a uh, few days na lang, magi February na, uh, love month na naman. We don't want a fake love, tama ba? Yung iba sa atin, medyo naiyak. Gusto natin ng true love as well. Or, right now, rampant to sa social media. How many of you have been victim by fake news? And we don't want that. We, want, we don't want to be victim of fake news. And that's why there are individuals who are so passionate uh, in groups or companies who are so passionate to eradicate fake news. Now, I've said that because don't you just hate it when you thought that you have the real thing, then you find out that it was fake all along. Ouch! Sakit, tama po ba? How much more these things that I've said, material things, sobrang masakit po yun, but how much more something as precious than our faith 
which can determine our eternal destiny. How can we know that what we have and what we believe is true? And this is what we're going to look at today in our fourth week of Abide series. How do we know then that we are true or real disciples of Jesus? And what does it mean for us to be true followers of Jesus? Open your Bibles with me in John 8. Let's just read this afternoon from verse 31 to 36. Verse 31 said, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been slave to anyone. How is it you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the word of the Lord. Join with me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you, God, for your promise, God, that freedom is possible for those who are in you, for those who abide in you. And even today, God, as we look and take heed of your word, I pray, Lord, for every one of us that give us wisdom and understanding so that we can comprehend your word and apply it in our lives. And I pray, God, that we will learn that what it truly means, God, to be followers of your or to be a disciple, God. And I hope, Lord, and I pray, God, that you will just speak to each one of us. Bless the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So what's just happening here? What's happening here? Jesus, nagaling pa po tong context na to in chapter 7. Jesus has just finished a speech at the temple where he explained differences between himself and his followers. And the result of Jesus' message was that many Many believe, many people believe in him. Actually, pag binalikan nyo po yung verse 30, di ba? Before 31, my verse 30. Galing naman ng mga U-belt. <laughs> Kaya gustong gusto ko. Pag tingin nyo po, pag binasa nyo yung verse 30, even as he spoke, many believe in him. When you look at the scripture, many believe in him. Even the demons believe in Jesus. Tama ba? Tama ba yung narinig nyo? Even the demons believe in Him. Yes, some of them nakikita nyo pa sa, <laughs> iba sa inyo, sino yun? Okay. The, even the demons believe and even the demons quoted scriptures. Now, verse 31 comes and, and John explained it and put into words. Then, in verse 31, then, after that encounter, Jesus begins to speak not just to those who had believed Him, but for everyone. You see, and you need to, to take note of this. This shows us that abiding in God's word, listen to this, abiding in God's word will not save us. Kasi when we abide in God's word, it's still a works mentality. Works don't save us. We're saved by grace through faith. Abiding in God's word tells us something not just something, but it points us to someone. We are saved by grace through faith. So this, this, this verse that tells us that if you abide in my word, it shows us and it tells us that those who abide in his word are the real disciples of Jesus. We'll go back later, later done. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. When you look at the scripture, the word Christian and disciples, there's a disparity, okay? Now, when you look at the word Christian, it just mentioned three times in the scripture. The word disciple in the Bible mentioned 286 times. <laughs> what does it mean for us? Jesus is not interested in gathering large crowds. He wants disciples. 
He is not just interested to people oh, and daming views and daming uh, online attendees. He is not just after us going to church, attending church online, attending live stream. He is not just after crowds. He wants disciple. And I know some of you, you just stumbled upon this um, FB live stream. And thank God, I know and I believe God has a word for you. So wag po kayong umalis, okay? But He wants not just for us to be spectators, He wants disciples. And how can we know? what Disciples, when you talk about disciples, these are not Christians on a Sunday, not just Bible readers or cool Christians. What's up, brother? Okay. Hindi lang po yung Christian sa social media. Ahem. Tama po ba? Hindi lang po yun yung gusto. Jesus is after real disciples. And how can we know if who are the real disciples of Jesus? How can we know them? And one of the marks of a true disciples is this. Someone who abides in the Word. Someone who abides in God's word. So the first that we need to understand, abiding in God's word serves as a proof that we are true disciples of Jesus. In verse 31, Jesus said, if you abide, if it's a conditional and if means anyone, not just the rich, not just the poor, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're young and old, whether this is your first time, Oh, you've been here attending with us uh, many years now. If anyone abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. The word abide, we uh, studied it. The word abide means to stay, remain, hold on, to continue. And the Greek word of this is meno. Diba? Meno. Ang ibig sabihin po niyan, yung meno na yan, to continue in an activity or state to continue, to remain in, to keep on. For example, na lang, may kakilala ba kayo? Itag nyo nga yung pinakamasipag nyong, yung, hindi nyo kaklase, pero pinakamasipag nyong kaibigan na estudyante. Na sobra, nagsusunog na ng kilay. Every time. Na kahit nung sinabi online break, si Mr. hindi, mag-aaral pa rin ako. Nice. Yung hindi nag-stop in learning. Di ba, tatag ko sana si Hana dito eh. <laughs> okay, sobrang grabe mag-aral at mag-aral. Mag Pwede nyo bang itag yung mga kaibigan nyo, nag-work sa Makati, sa Fort, minsan kahit, kahit vacation, di ba? Shout out sa mga sobrang sipag dyan. Sobrang sipag mag-trabaho, di ba? Pwede ko bang itag yung wife ko? <laughs> Mahal kaya yung wife ko, okay? Meron nyo ba sobrang itang nyo or maybe your parents na sobrang hardworking, they even pagod na sila, they continue, they keep on doing what they do. Or pwede nyo itag, yung, yung kaibigan nyong, nanibibinata, yung kaibigan nyong, hirap na hirap na na manligaw pero hindi pa rin sumusuko. Yon. Pwede ko bang itag? <laughs> pwede nang itag, okay? Now, it means that they continue, they remain, they persist. There's the word perseverance as well. In NIV, I love the translation when Jesus said that word remain, it was translated also from the word hold on. And it says that to the Jews who had believed him, these are not just people bystanders, okay? These are people who believe and say, Lord, Grabe, ang galing nung ginawa mo. They believe who Jesus was. But Jesus said to them, If you hold on to my teaching, you are my truly disciples or you are my real disciples. Hold on to his teaching. In September 1987, there was a pilot named Henry Dempsey and his co-pilot, Paul Bocher, they were flying a 15-seater commuter plane from Maine to Boston. In the middle of the flight, they heard a strange noise in the back of the plane. So ang sinabi ng pilot, may nakita siya, sabi ng pilot, uh, I'll go the back and see what's the problem. And sabi niya sa co-pilot niya, take charge of the plane. So Henry Dempsey got up from his seat, pilot seat, and he tried to figure out what's happening and what's the problem uh, was. And he pushed 
on the door kasi hindi maayos yung pagkasarado ng pinto. He pushed and he tried to push on the door at the back of the plane and then on his uh, on his uh, attempt to try to to push on the door, the airplane hits a turbulence. So nagkaroon po ng rattling sa sa, lo, sa 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 plane that leads for the plane door, yung back plane, yung back door niya nag-open. And in the pilot, co-pilot's uh, radar, may nakita po siyang nagbi-blink. May nakikita niya ng blink. And then bukas po yung likod nila. So, the co-pilot don't know what happened to his pilot, <laughs> captain, uh, captain niya. So he started to give mayday, mayday, and started to have an uh, emergency landing. And he said, I don't know what happened to my pilot. Si Henry Densi, and they started to find a rescue mission kasi pwedeng nasa in the middle of the ocean siya at nandoon, dun na, nahulog siya. On their way to Portland, dun sila nag-emergency landing, may nakita sila, medyo malayo pa, may nakita silang parang merong hugis ng tao. Alam, kung napanood nyo yung, wala akong picture nito, yung Mission Impossible, yung Mission Impossible na... Sa, Four na ata yun, yung, yung protocol, something like that. Yung si, uh, nasa likod siya at yung talaga nakakapit siya. May nakita silang parang tao. Superman? No, no, no. Parang tao, may naka, nandun sa likod. And eventually, nakita nila, it was Henry Dempsey. Nung pag suck out nung, nung, nung hangin, natanggal yung, 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 yung door ng plane, back door ng plane, nakahawak siya. Doon sa dulo ng plane, alam mo, pwede ko bang gawin? Yun, nakagano, no? Oh, plane niya. Wow! And hawak-hawak na yung mga kapatid, holding on to it, and could you imagine? Uh, 200 miles per hour in a 4,000 feet altitude. Gano ka? Bilis yun? Mabilis. <laughs> Iba sa'yo mag-compute mo. Sobrang bilis nun. 200 miles per hour. And he was semi-conscious paglabag ng plane. And it took them, so na may mga emergency uh, trunk na, emergency paramedic, it took them 10 minutes to pry. Ibig sabi ba sabihin, isa-isahin tanggalin yung kamay niya dun sa, dun sa dulo ng plane, dun sa parang uh, door ng plane, tanggalin yung kamay niya. 10 minutes, inisa-isahin nila. And eventually, the press was there. They talked to him. After he gained consciousness, an interview, and a reporter asked him, why is that you are holding on to that? <laughs> You're holding on to that. And eventually, he said, it's a matter of life and death. I knew if I lose my grip, I can be gone. I can die. It is a matter of life and death. When Jesus said, Hold on to the scripture. The word of God is a matter of life and death. And I hope that the more, I hope that that will bring us how we hold on, how we remain to the word of God. As disciples, when it comes to the word of God, it is a matter of life and death. Even if it's, we hold on, we abide, we stay, we remain in God's word no matter what. Even if it's unpopular. If the popular in our culture says, cheating is good, okay lang yun, lying is good, but the Word of God says we need to be in, uh, uh, people with integrity. When, when your classmates, when your office mates say, sexual impurity, immorality, okay lang yun. I think okay lang yun, lahat. When the Word of God says, we keep ourselves pure and holy before Him. In your workplace, pag sinabi, unpopular yung standing with your conviction and saying No to under the table uh, transaction, saying no to red tape, saying no to bribery, saying no to pornography, even if it's unpopular, we remain and we abide. We hold on to the Word of God even if it's inconvenient and painful. When your friends and your loved ones calling you, oi, nandiyan na naman yung born again Christian, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Even when they mock you, Sa kaklase nyo, ikaw lang yung, yung nagbabasa ng Bible at tinatawag kang uh, um, making fun of your name and making fun of you. 
Even if it's painful, even there's persecution in your family, you hold on. Even people reject you because of your faith, you hold on and stay in the Word of God. Even, even if the promises of God is taking too long. Sa mga singles dyan, shout out sa inyo na feeling nyo, this year na talaga, Lord, this year na talaga. And those of you who are believing for children, those of you who are gradually waiting, gradually waiting, di ba? Gagraduate na yan. Even the provision, the promise of God provision, it takes too long. It doesn't matter. Even your promotion, reconciliation, salvation of loved one, healing, it doesn't matter even how long it will take. We hold on to the Word of God. Pwede nyo bang ilagay sa comment section, hashtag, or ilagay nyo, hold on. Ito po nilabi, kapit lang kay Lord. Kapit lang sa word niya. Why? Because those people who are disciples of Jesus, they hold on to His word. And the word of God, abiding to God's word, is a proof, serves as a proof that we are disciples, true disciples of Jesus. In verse 32, let me just read verse 32. Sabi sa verse 32, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. This is a progression of a statement. If you abide in me and in my word, you are my real disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Abiding in God's word, the result, let me say this, the result of abiding in God's word is this, knowing the truth and living in freedom. So pag tinignan niyo po yung progression niyan, sobrang, uh, ang ganda po. If you hold on, if you abide in my word, you are my real disciples. And you will know the truth, and that truth will set you free. You will know the truth. Jesus mentioned seven Times, that word, you know the truth in this section. In verse 40, verse 44, verse 45, verse 46, and so on. He was telling us something. And he was pointing us to someone. You will know the truth. Now, how did the audience during Jesus' time responded to this? Ito na naman. Kasi laging pag may sinabi si Jesus, how they respond? And how can, tayo, ganun rin ba tayo mag-respond? Katulan nila. Sabi ng mga audience ni Jesus, and these are not bystanders. These are people who believe and following Him. Grabe, Lord. They believe in Him. Verse 33, they answered. <laughs> they answered, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is that you say you will become free? <laughs> So in short, the audience response is, set us free from what? <laughs> we are not slave of anyone. How would you say, diba, and you will be set free, diba? Could you imagine kung iba sa inyo sasabihin nyo, laya ka na. Saan? <laughs> sa amin po na mga nagstay at na quarantine, okay, for a period of time, alam namin yung ibig sabihin ng laya. Ganito pala ang lumabas. <laughs> Nalala nyo ba yan? After 14 days or iba sa atin, uh, sobrang gusto nyo sa bahay nyo after 21 days, ito pala yung feeling, di ba? Kung kayo laging lumalabas, anong sinasabi mong you are free, you are, you have freedom. So this is what for them. Set us free from what? Their claim that Abraham's descendants, tignan niyo po yung parang false uh, security nila. Their claim that they are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage was certainly false. Because if you look at the scripture, the Jews has been enslaved we, by seven mighty nations. It was recorded in the Old Testament and it was recorded in the book of Judges. So for them, that's, we've never been enslaved to anyone. Duh! <laughs> May pitong nation nga nag, nag-conquer sa inyo at nag-dominate sa inyo. The, the ten northern tribes have been carried away. They were captive by Assyria. And two southern tribes, they've been gone into 70 years of captivity with Babylon. In that very hour, when the Jews says that we are set free, free us from what? We've never been a slave. Actually, they were under the Roman 
empire. <laughs> so actually, in short, parang, we don't need help. It was a din, in, in denial or denial on their part. You know how difficult it is for proud religious people to admit their failings and their needs. And this talks about their spiritual arrogance and spiritual blindness. It's hard to help someone that they don't think they need help. And the same goes with these people. They were holding on to something that they thought this will set us free. But Jesus is the one that says, no, I am the word that will set you free. I am what you need. Remember the bread of life? I am what you need. And I am the one who will set you free. Jesus said the truth that they would set, that he would set them free. However, he was not talking about political freedom. Because for them, they answered was a political freedom. Set us free from what? We're not slave to anything. We're not slave to anyone. That's why I don't need to explain. Let the word of God explain. Jesus explained it. Ang ganda nung pagka-explain ni Jesus. Jesus provides the best explanation for his own statement. And that is in verse 34. He said, verse 34, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practice sin, practices sin is a slave to sin. So being a slave to sin is the ultimate bandage of man. The freedom that Jesus offers is a spiritual freedom from the bandage of sin. This is to release us from the lifestyle of habitual lawlessness. It's not just a sin, a one-time sin, but it's a continuous pattern of sin. It is a habitual sin that they're living in that they thought and they cannot see it because they are spiritually blind and they are spiritually arrogant. And Jesus, it's hard for them. It's hard for them to say that they cannot help themselves and they need a savior. They need someone that will help them until they encounter the truth. You know, every maybe three months, we have what we call Victory Weekend. And I think this coming February, we have a Victory Weekend. And shout out sa kakatapos sa mag Victory Weekend. And this is a great, great opportunity. It's a two, one and a half day actually of knowing after you finish one-to-one, ano po yung one-to-one? Hindi pa po kayo nakoconnect. You can just type the hashtag, hashtag connect so that we can introduce to you what is one-to-one and help you to start your discipleship journey. And in this Victory Weekend, people or students, young professionals, married people come together from different walks of life with different brokenness with the same God, one God that can heal and that can complete their brokenness, that can bring restoration to their soul. During Victory Weekend, they understand the freedom that we have in Christ because Christ already set us free But the question is, do we know that freedom? And are we walking in that freedom? You know, one of the stories of students uh, in Menjola area back then was um, she she didn't know that premarital sex is a sin. She lived a life, a lifestyle of giving in to that desires of the flesh until he, she encountered the truth, until someone explained to her about the word and someone explained to her that this is the word of God says. And during that time, sa Victory Weekend niya po nalaman na kasalanan po pala yun. And right there and then, she received the freedom that Christ bought from the cross for her. And she started to live a different kind of lifestyle. You know, sometimes our spiritual blindness and our spiritual arrogance limit us, uh, hinder us to experience the full freedom that we have in Christ. 
And I hope and I pray that this year, God will remove the scales in our eyes that hinder us to see that we need Him and for us to live no longer in darkness but walking in the light. When you look at the stories of people experiencing that freedom, let me say this, that abiding in Jesus is not restricting but rather liberating. Let me say that again. Abiding in Jesus is not restricting but liberating. Naalala ko yung mga kasama ko sa bahay dati nung umaaten natin na ako ng church. Sabi na, uy, di ba bawal dyan yung ganito? Bawal dyan, bawal dyan, bawal dyan. So ngayon, feeling natin, bawal to pag naging Christian ako. Ayoko dito, bawal yan. Di ba sa bawal? Bawal yan. It's restricting. No. Abiding in Jesus is not restricting. It's actually liberating. It will set you free. It will help you to walk in freedom. It liberates us from the bondage of sin and for us to live in freedom. Well, actually, you know, sin takes us captives. The freedom that we know and the people know is a false freedom. When we said that I'm free person, tayo, lalo na tayo dito sa Pilipinas, di ba? I'm free, I can do what I, whatever I can do. Yes, actually, that's a false freedom. Because sin tells us to live in our own way. If I want to do this, di ba po, pag meron kayong sinabihan na uh, parang wag mo nang gawin yan and all, sino ka ba? I have freedom. I can do what I, can, what I want to do. Because this is my body. But which is ultimately when we understand that this is a temple of God, that when we understand that Christ came to set us free and Christ wants us to live in freedom, then we will know that this life should give glory to Him. What we call freedom is actually bandage. Sin is like an addiction that we can't kick on our own. We need someone more powerful than us to break the chains for us to set free. Whether we re realize it church or not, whether we desire to or not, we need to be set free. And Jesus can set us free from the bondage of sin. If you are here and struggling from gambling, Jesus can set you free from gambling. If you are here who are struggling from temper, lalo na nung nag, nag work from home lahat, ah, Lord, help us. Diba? Ma, hindi ako galit. Hindi nga ako galit. Diba? If you are here who are struggling from temper, Jesus, thank God, thank you, Jesus, can set us free. From some of you who are uh, struggling from living an immoral life or morality, Jesus can set you free. From some of you from vices, Years and years and sabi ng iba, ay, mukhang walang pag-asa na to. Kay Jesus may pag-asa. He can set you free. For those of you, lies, di ba? Spreading lies, uh, living in lies is already your lifestyle. Jesus can set you free. And whatever addiction that you've been struggling to, it's not easy. But Jesus can set you free and you can fill in the blanks. Jesus can and will set you free. Amen? Receive your freedom in Christ today. And how? How can we do that? How can we do that? Jesus explained how can we set free and explain the spiritual freedom that we have. Difference between spiritual freedom and the bandage is a matter whether one is a son or a servant or a slave. In John 35 verse 36, about to end, Sabi ni Jesus, the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So the servant may live in the house, but he is not part of the family. And he cannot be guaranteed of the future. So these Jews knew that slaves, alam, alam nila yon, that slaves had no permanent house in the household, kahit nandun na sila, and they cannot be guaranteed of a future. In their society, even slave could be sold at almost any time. So when you talk about slave during their time, they can work in the same house for their entire life, but slaves, let me say this, they had no rights and no power. Slaves have no rights and no power. And that's why I said, slaves, if you're a slave to sin, you don't have 
any power over sin. Because you, and you don't have any rights to remain in that house. Virtually, nothing could change a son's position as a child in the household. Diba ta, <laughs> diba Pastor Paul, nung sa nagkamali ka na rin, diba sa bahay nyo, hindi ka naman sinabi ng tatay mo na hindi na kita anak. I mean, sana wala nang sabi sa inyo. Okay? Diba? Ako nagkamali rin ako, ilang beses na ako pinagalitan ng tatay ko, and I'm sure yung mga anak ko, nagkamali na yan. Sobrang cute nila. Jesus. Sobrang cute nila, pero hindi sila cute. Parang marami silang nagawa. But I also, hindi ko sinabi sa kanila, sobrang gulo nyo. From now on, hindi na kayo mga anak ko. No. <laughs> Pag tinignan nila yung birth certificate nila, they are still my son. And same goes. Pag nagkasala ka, hindi naman, pag na kay Lord ka na, nagkasala ka, hindi naman ibig sabihin, hindi ka na anak ni Lord. And there's the difference. Sons, they have rights and they have power. Ito pa po matindi. They have the power, ultimately, to free slaves. The slave cannot do that. They cannot free themselves, but the sons not just have the rights, but they also have the, the power to free slaves. And how can we, how can slaves of sin be set free? Only by the Son. And who is the Son? <laughs> Which is Jesus. Jesus said He is the Son of Man. Jesus here is the Son of Man, ultimately has the authority, has the power, has the right to set everyone who are in the bondage of sin. And he said that as you remain in me, you will know the truth and that truth will set you free. In John 14 verse 6, the truth is not just a matter of principles. Truth is a person. And that is our Lord Jesus. In John 14 verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It was, He is the personified truth. As we abide in Jesus, as we remain in Jesus, know His word, know the truth, have a relationship with the truth, and take that journey of discipleship, every bondage that we are in, ultimately, we will be set free. It's not an overnight thing. But as long as you stay with Jesus, you will be set free. Let me just say this, and I'll end it with one story called the, Oh, keyboard this to help me here. Abiding in God's word validates us as disciples of Jesus and liberates us to live in freedom. Let me say that again. Abiding in God's word, abiding in his word, validates us as disciples of Jesus and liberates us to live in freedom. And we can experience that freedom, not tomorrow, not next week, Today, we can experience that freedom. Many years ago, uh, I remember when I was preparing for this message, and maybe some of you, you heard this story. Years ago, an Englishman had made his fortune in the golds of California, gold fields of California. And he was returning to London or England to, to live. So he tried to ship all the golds, in the um, um, river flows of New Orleans. And, and he stayed for a little longer, a little bit in that place in New Orleans in the U.S. And as a tourist of, in New Orleans, he did as most tourists do. He went down to slave market because in the early 1850s, 1800s, slaves were still being sold in New Orleans and elsewhere in the South. So it was noisy. I don't know if naka-attend na kayo o nakapanood na kayo ng auction. Di ba? Yung, yung storage wars, mga ganon. Yung may bidding and then people, oh, I'll bid this. Oh, $100, $200, ganon. It was noisy in that market. And there, he, he witnessed a young black woman was brought to that place and then stand on the podium and the auctioner asked, how much will you bid to get this woman? Very young and beautiful black woman. And as he heard and stand and heard and witnessed this, he heard the people and the, these people said, this is what I'm going to do with that woman. I will bid 
uh, a higher price to get that woman in. And she will serve me and she will do this to me and all. So, the bid started. Auctioner asked for the price. And, these, and someone gave a higher price for that woman. She, he cannot stay any longer to hear the, the words of this man. How will they treat the young, helpless woman? So he bid twice, twice the last bidder. A bid that never in that history, no one ever bid with that price. So he bid that price. And people was wondering what happened. And he won. So the auctioner said, Okay, sir, you can get now your slave. You can get. And actually, you can get yourself. You can pay in the corner and then your slave is yours. So what he did was he went to the uh, cashier and paid for that, uh, for the price of the girl. So the girl, the young lady was so furious to him. Parang galit na galit po. Ayaw niyang tignan yung lalaki. But for them, hindi niya kailangan hawakan yung girl kasi susunod na lang. Susunod lang yung slave nila kung saan pupunta yung master. So he went to this place, uh, department, and it was a... Uh, because the girl cannot, don't know and cannot read, can't read. Uh, hindi niya alam kung nasaan sila. So the Englishman went to this uh, place and talked to one of a lawyer to, to sign a paper. And their discussion was, it's not unlawful, it's not like this. But the Englishman said, I insist. I insist. He said, it's the law. I insist. And finally, the transaction went well. And then, that person in that, um, in that um, parang lawyer, attorney's office, gave a paper to this Englishman. So he got the paper, Englishman, and gave to the slave girl. And he said, here, take these papers. And he said, I bought you to make you free. As long as you have these papers in your possession, no man can ever make you slave again. And the girl doesn't look, that man, you are, you are lying. You are like them, these people, you are. And, and the, the Englishman said, no, it's real. And when the woman saw the paper, she started crying and can't believe what she saw. Because that paper dictates and tells that she are, she's no longer owned by any person. She is a free woman. No one can touch her as long as she has that paper. She can't believe. And her response was, she fall on her knees to this Englishman and started to kiss her toes and said, how, how, how? And she said this word, you bought me to make me free. I'll serve you forever. She understand not to serve her, ayaw niya, to serve him. But when she understand the freedom that she has, I'll serve you forever. No longer out of obligation, but I'll serve you forever because of this grace or because of this thing you've showed me. You see, we are set free by the grace and mercy of God. When we say abide in Jesus all the days of life, we say that we continue to worship and serve Him until the day that we breathe our last breath here on earth. I pray and I hope that this year, we will continue to serve Him. We will continue to abide Him and hold on this word. Amen. Bow your heads with me and close your eyes. Father, we thank You, Lord, for Your word today. Thank You, God, for reminding us, Lord, that what we've seen in the past, how You set the adulterous woman free, how You set those people who are in bandage of sin, you can still do it, Lord, today. And Lord, I pray God, first group of people, Lord, I pray God for those of us who are still in the bandage of sin. May you pull us, Lord. Drowning God, those of us who are drowning God in the sea of sin. Pull us, God. Help us, Lord. 
And I pray, Father, that you will give them the grace to say no to ungodliness. Give them the grace, God, to live in a pride and a holy life today. Give them the grace, God, when the temptation is in front of them to say no. Lord, help them, God. Anything, God, that hindering them to follow you, may you give them the strength, Lord. May you may they receive the freedom. Go ahead and receive the freedom. May you receive the freedom that we have, Lord, in you, Jesus. Thank you, God, because you set them free. We honor you, Lord, today. And for the rest of us, let's just pray. Lord, thank you, God, for this month, how you sustain us. Lord, give us the grace and strength to hold on to your word no matter what. Even if it's unpopular, even, God, if it's inconvenient and painful, and even as when your promises takes too long, God. Lord, we hold on to your word. Help us, God, to be people who abides in your word. We honor you, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Go ahead, clap your hands to the Lord for his goodness and his faithfulness. Let me speak, church, a word of prayer for us and benediction. Lord, we thank you, God, for how you showed yourself, God, to us this month. And even, Lord, as we face another month, Lord, of February, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord shine his face upon to you and give you peace. And may the Lord continue to lift up your countenance and continue to comfort you and give you peace. We honor you, Lord, today. Be blessed, church, and see you again next week. God bless everyone. See you guys next week.